Welcome to the Green Table Talk, where we will have open and honest discussion about transplant. I'm your host, Janine Johnson. Do you know how long your mom was living um, with liver failure prior to her telling the family? The process was so, it's so foreign, right? Like, how does one get a kidney? It was so surreal. But when I was going through my kidney failure, everybody came out, everybody had an opinion, everybody was a doctor. <laughs> And so I had a whole bunch of suggestions. Do this fast, do that fast. You gotta cleanse, you gotta juice. So my question to you is, is any of this real? Hello and welcome to the Green Table Talk. I am your host, Jeanine Johnson. Today, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you chef extraordinaire, Amanda Hamer. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Now, um, today's episode, we're going to talk about healthy cooking. Um, in the Caribbean community, we have a tendency of putting a little bit too much of certain things, like too much salt, or we tend to eat a lot of carbs, or we have a huge plate full of rice. And we don't have to do that. We could actually eat healthy. We could reduce the carbs, reduce the rice, and still have an amazing meal, still filling and healthy. And this could work across the board, whether it's pre-transplant, post-transplant, you know, anything at all, just healthier eating, that's what this is all about. And Amanda is going to take us on this amazing journey of how we can do this. So, Amanda. Hello. First, <laughs> so I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of sad that I won't be able to eat any of what you're about to create. So I'll be able to just like look at it and hope we have smell a vision and I could smell it over the, the our, our, you know, computer and, and phone, etc. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Let me know, how did you get into cooking? It started at a very young age, actually. Um, by the age of nine, I knew that I wanted to actually get into cooking and I started taking it more serious when I was at camp. I would um, excel at baking. We were allowed to bake cookies and pies and stuff like that. And I always had everybody looking over my shoulder to see what I was doing. And so I said, I have something here. And yeah. then by the age of 12, I was put into a co-op. I worked at the Sheraton Hotel. All they had me doing was cutting potatoes and vegetables. And then I said, listen, I, I'm eager to know how to make soup, how to make this and that, and, and learn the, the mother sauces from scratch. Mm -hmm. So they had me move into the other section of the hotel uh, um, restaurant. And I just... Um, I just gravitated towards it. And I worked in many different spots in Toronto. And I, before I actually launched my company, I was working as a head chef at different restaurants. And I said, I, I need to do something with this. I need to come up with a name for myself. And I love baking and I love cooking as well. So I said, let me just start a little company. And it was my side hustle for like about five years. And then in 2018, I, I got, it was my last paycheck. It was October, it was the beginning of October. And I got my last paycheck then. And I looked at it and I said, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Look right. And it doesn't feel right. And I don't know nothing about being an entrepreneur, but I'm going to take a leap of faith. And I did. And I haven't looked back since. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So tell me, what are you making for us today? Well, today I'm going to teach you, um, first I'm going to do a dressing. That's just, you know, a lot of people just, they want dressing, they go outside and they, they buy the dressing and it has all these other additives that they don't want, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you how to make a basic dressing that's from scratch and it's mixed with mango. And you can also, I'm using vegan mayo as the, the base. I'm going to put about three tablespoons of mayo. And the good thing about this recipe is that you can add whatever you like, whatever herbs, um, you can eliminate the salt. Okay, your house must smell so good all the time. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely cooking. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna about gauge it. Okay. Then we need some acidity. So we're gonna add some uh, white wine vinegar. We're gonna start off with one tablespoon. Next, we're gonna just add a bit of a shadow benny. Now, I usually buy my shadow benny um, and then I freeze it because sometimes it goes bad really quickly. So that's another tip that you can do is either, um, you can freeze it, chop it up, freeze it in ice cube trays, maybe add a little bit of oil or whatever, um, and just drop it into soup. So whatever, 
That's a good idea, actually, the ice cream trays. I never thought about that. Maybe half a tablespoon. We're gonna do some black pepper as well. Just a few twists of that. And then for our sugar, you don't have to add regular sugar. You can do agave, brown, uh, sorry, coconut sugar. You could do maple syrup. I'm gonna do maple syrup though. Now, I never knew there was such thing as coconut sugar. This is my first time hearing that. Yeah, it's raw sugar. It's low in glycemic index for anybody who has diabetes or just watching their sugar intake. Okay, that's good to know. Quiet taste, because it has like a, a burnt taste, but once you keep eating it, it, it uh, you get used to the taste. I'm gonna put like two teaspoons of the maple. And then we're gonna blend it up and taste. This is how I like to cook. I like to put things together. And this is how I come up with um, new sauces and stuff like that. I blend, mm -hmm. taste, blend, taste. Of course. All right, we're gonna use, we were gonna use millet, but now we're gonna use quinoa. And okay. you can also use brown rice. And there's different types of um, alternative alternative grains that you can use. Now I have to admit, I've, I've been kind of hesitant about quinoa. Like I've always wanted to try, but I always feel like I'm gonna do it the wrong way. I'm gonna mess it up somehow. Like, is it as easy as everyone says it is? Absolutely, it's the same ratio okay. as rice. Now, what's the consistency that the, the quinoa is supposed to be? Is it like a soft or slightly? It's like you, when it comes to, like after 20 minutes when it's cooked and you put a lid on it to steam out, it's supposed to be like fluffy, like rice. I'll get like the lifestyle beans and there's no salt added. Beautiful, okay. It's high in fiber. It's a good source of calcium and good source of, of iron as well. Use red or white or yellow onions, whatever mm -hmm. you prefer. So I'm just putting in some ginger here. <clears throat> you maybe want to cook this for about four to five minutes. So now I'm going to add my curry and my garmasala, I don't have any garmasala, but garmasala is a really good spice too to add to this curry dish. Okay. So with the cumin, I'll probably do about half a teaspoon. For the curry, I'll probably do a teaspoon. Now we've been talking going back and forth, but typically, how long would it take, do you think, would you know, to make you know, everything that you're creating right now? How long would it normally take? 25 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Added a little, little bit of water, and what I want it to do is kind of stew down. Okay. I'm gonna let it um, stew down for about maybe another 10 minutes, and then it should be ready. Just half a tablespoon of tomato paste in there. That was really good. I mean, if you're a meat eater, you can, you know, chop up some chicken breast and put that in there too. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wish that you can smell this and taste this. So over here, I made it really fancy. I just put, you know, the other thing is too, um, to treat yourself, make mm -hmm. it look presentable, edible, like, you know, fancy. Something you would see at a restaurant, right? They don't just plop it on your dish. They always make it look fancy. So I put this into a container and I just flipped it upside down and uh, get that presentation. And then you've got your three or six beans with the potato, mm -hmm. uh, with the garmacella, the curry, with a little bit of tomato paste um, and other spices. And then I've got my mango shadow benny dressing with cucumber and fresh tomatoes. My goodness, Amanda, that looks so good. And it's wow. And it's healthy. It's not, you know, tons of rice or tons of salt or tons of, you know, seasoning that has all this other stuff in it. It's all healthy. And like it's, you said, like 25 minutes, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I like to talk about that. A lot in the West Indian culture, we use a lot of Maggi, the mm -hmm. uh, brand, and that's mm -hmm. full of MSG. See? See that? What? Yeah. So I don't use Maggie. I I I, be, I used to use, and then I found out like, I, why am I getting these headaches? Mm. I like this, and then I did my research, and um, when I was in Trinidad, it's pure. All they ate, all they yes. ate was Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Mm -hmm. well, See, I never, I never knew that. I never knew it had MSG. Yeah, yeah. Wow, mm. Amanda, this was an excellent, excellent edition of the Green Table Talk. 
I'm so happy we had this conversation because, you know, a lot of people are kind of stuck. I was there too, kind yeah. of stuck. It's like, okay, I'm supposed to eat healthy. What do I do? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, you've educated me today with so many things that I didn't even know, right? So awesome. And so I'm hoping that you did the exact same thing for our viewers as well. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Save some for me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So at this point in time, I usually share a little nugget of knowledge or a nugget of wisdom. And so today's nugget is vow to stay true to yourself, regardless of what life throws at you, vow to stay true to yourself, then you will be just fine. So. Thank you very much once again, Amanda. Feel free to join us on the Green Table Talk. And everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>